So, well, you're at this point in your life where you think, okay, I can do microprocessor projects without using a Nano or an Uno or something like that. I want to program a naked chip. And then somebody like me comes along and tells you, well, use an 80 tiny 85 The only thing you need to program is, is a little programmer like the thing you see uh, up there, 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 this thing, not this thing, this one over there. And um, yeah, and Bob's your uncle. But, and of course there's a but, using a programmer like this has it. If you watch the video about the programmer, this is uh, schematics, you will realize that there are lots of lines going to the little CPU. Let me zoom in. For programming this little CPU, we need D10, this comes from the Arduino Nano, D11, D12, and D13. And if you have your pinout right in your memory, this is all, say, MOSI and MISO, so an SPI communication. Atmel calls this ICSP in circuit system. Oh, I'm lost here. Well, this is the interface they're using here. But you can tell. Only these two pins are not used while programming. So, you need four pins to program the little ship. And here's the big downside. If you want to program this little thing in circuit, so why it's in its circuit, you have to take care of these, watch what levels are on these pins while you're programming it. Well, D10 is easy because this is reset, reset but You need to take care of at least of three lines that can't be, say, held down by something. Imagine something in your systems uh, holding down D15 while programming, and the programmer wants to override this by pulling it high, so uh, it fights against the system, and somebody was, something will give there, and um, maybe magic smoke's coming out. Uh, in the worst case. In the best case, you simply can't program this while it's in system. Okay, you say, well, while prototyping, you have a delayed package, so simply remove it, put it in the programmer, maybe you have two of them, swap them around, la, 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 la. But when you get to the point where you have SMD components, so something that's on the board and it's not easy to remove, well, this gets tricky in a heartbeat. I'd say this is not a problem for small projects. But if you have a bigger project there with more pins there, there are microcontrollers with more pins, This could become a really time sink to remove things, refit them, and some of the newer microcontrollers aren't available in delayed. So you have to use SMD components. And, uh, well, whew, how do we do this now? And, yeah, there is a solution for our problem. The tiny RVR microcontrollers. Um, this is, an, of course, an Atmel product like the 80 Tiny 85, but it's a newer series. And the tiny RVRs come in Series 0, Series 1, and Series 2 in different kind of shapes and what it can do. And there's this long table over here. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. That tells you a lot of 80 tiny controllers, and you can already see there are a ton of them. They range from 32 kilobytes of program flash down to 2 kilobytes of program flash. They have an EEPROM, well, it's flash memory anyways, but it's a simulated EEPROM with, uh, you can tell over here, and some SROM, of course, up to 2 kilobytes of SROM. And they come in packages up to 24 pins and down to 8 pins. So this is a pretty nice range. So they have the whole shebang. They have 10-bit ADCs. Well, most of them have, have one, some of them have two, and uh, some have a DAC. Yeah, look at this. There's already a DAC, so a digital-to-analog converter. This is something the Uno, you know, the classics, can't do. They don't have a DAC, and this is on board here. They have some timers, of course. They have event systems, blah, 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 blah. I won't bore you here. They run up to... I run up to, say, 20 megahertz, and um, yeah, this is pretty neat, I tell you. If you look at the Atmel website and find, try to find out how to program them, they probably tell you, use Atmel Studio and an Atmel ICE. This is a 160 buck adapter to program these chips. And don't worry, we're not going to use this. And wait, 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 before you hit the stop button, No, you don't have to use Atmel Starter or Atmel Studio because this works in an Arduino environment. 
Yes, we don't have to leave our comfort zone. Let me show you what you need and how this is done. And yeah, there's our old friend Spence Conde back. He's the guy who programmed the core to program 80 tiny 85s in an Arduino environment. And he did a marvelous job with a mega tiny core, up there it says this, uh, core that programs tiny RVRs 0, 1, and 2 series. Yeah, it does them all. I really don't want to go into details over here because you can already tell this is a very, very long documentation. Really, really long. And I strongly suggest read on here. There's so much info in there and he writes really nice. He's, this is not dry. This is very funny to read. And um, go through this. Really do this. Do yourself the favor. What we are going to need is, of course, the installation. As we saw before in the programmer for the ATtiny85, there's a link for the board manager. So you simply copy the thing. I go for copy here, Control C, and it tells you what to do: file preferences, tools board, blah 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 blah. Uh, just a sec, I show you what what he means with that. So back in my trusty Arduino 1.8.19, you check files, then you check uh, preferences. Go down here to Additional Board Manager URLs, and I click on this thing over here because uh, I have so many URLs in there. Just go there, expand this a bit. If you don't have the URL for the Board Manager in here, you simply go to a new line and paste it in there. There you go, and I think I have it over here already. So I don't need to add this to my Board Manager here because it's already in there. If you don't have this, this is the way to do this. Then press OK, and pops your uncle. Who is this Bob anyway? So you set the link for the course now, but the boards aren't in there. So go to Tools, go to Boards Manager, come on. And type up here 80 tiny, should be two, 80 tiny core there. No, this is the wrong one. And scroll up and down, and there's our mega tiny core. And you see it's already installed, so I don't click install now. You want to maybe install this right here, and you can already see these are all the supported CPUs, so you can grab anything, anything that's available and that fits to your circuit. And is there a lot to set up? Heck yeah. If I select the Mega Tiny Core, you can see all these CPUs that are supported over here. For a test for us, we will go in for a 80 tiny for 12 because I have them handy over here. So I'll select this one. And there you find a bunch of settings, a bunch of possible settings. What's important here? Well, uh, of course, the internal clock. As a rule of the thumb, you say uh, the faster the clock, the more power the chip needs. So if you want to go for a low power application, you always want to go for, say, one megahertz or something in the lower megahertz ranges. If you need something higher clocked, well, maybe 20 megahertz is a thing for you. Mm, keep in mind that things like a um, we as 2812, so RGB LEDs, maybe we are infected for this. Of course, uh, if you want to clock out something that has 800 kilohertz as data, you maybe we need something like 8 megahertz to do this. This is maybe a thing to test it out. You can enable or disable the millis. You can choose the startup time. That can come very handy if you have an unstable supply. So it saved my butt sometimes before. You can actually set the EEPROM if it's retained or not. Maybe this is handy. I probably would overleave this at retained. So now we have all these things installed over here. This looks pretty nice, right? But I haven't talked about how to program this chip. Huh. Okay, let's see. So here's the data sheet of our little 80 tiny 412. As I said before, this is just for reference. You can use any device over here. Just choose the right CPU in your Arduino IDE. And if we check over here for the pinout, well, not much to write home about, right? We have VDD and GND this time on the top of the chip. If it's better or not, I don't care because um, I do the layout anyways. We have one, two, three, four pins that can do digital or analog functions. So you can have a ADC or you can have digital inputs. This is all in there. 
And we have one thing over here on pH zero that is a reset knot, so um, should be kept high. And there's a word we all have been waiting for, UPDI. UPDI stands for Universal Programming Anti-Bugging Interface. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Re re but remember the ATtiny 85? We needed three, three and a half pins to do the programming. And this is all done by this pin over here, pin six. This is all the programming and it could do debugging. Well, not in an Arduino IDE. Sorry for that. If you want to have debugging, so breakpoints and stuff, you have to use Admiral Studio or Admiral Starter. I don't know which one. And probably an, Admi an Admiral Ice. So if you can live without the debugging part, let's see how we electrically connect this thing. Well, this is so stupidly easy. This is probably the easiest schematic I ever drawn. So go out and buy the cheapest USB to serial adapter you can get. The cheapest one. It really doesn't matter. I'd prepare a CH340 chip on there. Uh, you can go for the FTDI if you have the right drivers for this. CH340, I think, is a bit more ro robust, but choose anything. It doesn't matter. Get a resistor. The value doesn't really matter. For me, 3.9K works fine. You maybe want to experiment with something 3.3K or say 4.7K. It probably will work. Connect the resistor like that. And this, my friend, is your UPDI port. That's it. You can use the power pins from the serial to USB adapter to power the little microcontroller while programming it. Of course, you I'd suggest to use a ground lead. So well, let me put ground in here and connect it somewhere to your board. And this is it. This is the whole schematics. Sorry for the bad drawing as always, but you know, left-handed people tend to draw really, really shitty. So um, let's see this in action. By the way, the best way for me to store these little soup use is one of these pill boxes. You get them at AliExpress for a dollar or something. And then you have all these little tiny MCUs over here. And of course, this is all SMD, but you can store all these little tiny things in here and you have all your CPUs with you. Isn't this cool? By the way, if you want to have a deep dive how this works, of course, go to Spence Code's documentation and read on, if you like. If you only want to program a chip, stay here. This is my cheap-ass USB to serial adapter. Over there is the 3.9K resistor, and this is simply connected by RX or TX. You can maybe see this on the display. If you're watching this on, the, on a monitor, you may be able to see the markings on the board. Yeah, and from there you see I simply attached the wire and this is it. This specific adapter gives me the ability to get out 5 volts or 3.3 volts. I've chosen the 5 volt line here and this is how we are going to power the little CPU we're going to see now. <sighs> Did I mention that I hate breadboards? I mean, these are only four wires and it always looks like a complete garbled mess. All right, what did we do here? There's our little programmer over here with the red, gray, and black one. This is the UPDI. Gray is the black UPDI. Down here somewhere is a little tiny, 80 tiny 412 chip. Yeah, and I'm cheating over here because, uh, yeah, this is, of course, on a adapted adapter board. And over here is my trusty logic analyzer. I promise that we're going to build this one in one of the next, next episodes. Promise, promise, promise. But we need to get the Halloween episode out first. This is so much stress, guys. <sighs> Well, okay, so hardware is set, let's do some software. So just for reference over here, this is how the Tiny is connected. And you find these excellent data sheets over at the Mega Tiny Core repository on GitHub. Spence, mate, you're doing a ma marvelous job there. Thank you very much. So for my little blinky thing, I'll just set up PA2 as an output pin. And uh, yeah, we're going to compile this now. So you guys should be able to see everything now at once. And uh, yeah, I have to change my little program over here because this is PB2. And this is everything. So let's flash. Sketch. 
upload using programmer. This is the same as we did with the 80 tiny 85 programmer. So go. So lucky me, you didn't see me screwing up the pin assignment. You didn't see this, right? I hope you didn't see this. Well, of course, it's PA2 and not PB2. And there it is, blinking away happily. Let's marvel on this. Isn't it beautiful? Success again. And uh, for you who uh, want to ask, okay, you sure that you programmed this right now? So uh, let's make this a bit slower. So say 888 and go for 444 over here. Let's do this again, just for the fun of it. And there's our slow blink. By the way, if you were wondering how this is possible, we don't have a loop. We do have a loop, but there's only one statement in the loop and that's all the blinks. Well, this is a modular op operator and the malice over here. This is a, I think I did a video on this channel about this. Well, I have to check this. Maybe I do. I need to do a video. If you want to know how this works, how this one liner blink is possible, how this is done, let me know in the comments, guys. So now we have this thing going over here and we have proved that UPDI works and it's very, very easy to use. And of course, there is no need to stay with a 8-pin chip. Look at this. This is a 20-pin chip and you have a boatload of IOs on this one here. And it's still programmed via UPDI. You see this over here. PA0 is UPDI. So you have 20... 19, 18, 17, 17 pins left for doing I/O, and you can do lots of things over here. You can do serial, you can do I squared C, you can do you do SPI. Yeah, this thing has it all. I'd say if these were available when Arduino started with their product line with the Arduino Uno back in the days, so 2005, I think, or 2002, so a long time ago. If these were available then, they probably would have skipped all the USB adapters and simply went for this because this is so nicely done, so easily done. For me, this easy handling of with, the, uh, with, these, with these chips blows everything out of the water. Everything in a small scale, of course. This can't beat a, say, recipe 2040. No way, it doesn't do. Uh, but for small projects, well, or for medium-sized projects anyways, this is fine. This will work. So I hope you learned something today. This is a great thing. And let me know in the comments what you think of UPDI programming. If you have done it before, if you think, okay, this is the thing I really, really want to do. And uh, these chips are available. There was, it was a chip shortage back in the days. There was a real shortage there. But right now they should be available. If you found your chip, buy a boatload of them because um, they're coming on and off. This is... I would suggest don't buy them from AliExpress. Go for the extra mile and go for DigiKeys or Mauser because this way you can be sure that you get a 80 tiny and not some fake chips somewhere from uh, some uh, backdoor Chinese. Uh, I don't know where they fake the chips. Well, uh, anyways, this is it from me for today. I hope you learned something and you had some fun on the way. This is always important. And uh, yeah, I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.